What's up, guys? This is Wes with Fantasy Smack Talk. Week 13 already in the fantasy football season. Going to bring you my top pivot picks for this week in the NFL FanDuel Sunday Million, as I've been doing all year. This week's a little unique. Uh, don't have a ton of obvious chalk or, um, you know, great, easily identifiable, low-owned options. So, uh, bring in some guys that either have good value price-wise or still uh, should be right around that 10% owned threshold. Uh, first up, going Carson Wentz as my quarterback. Carson Wentz priced 8000 on FanDuel at Seattle. Uh, according to FanDuel's metrics, Seattle's defense is 8th best in the league. Um, but without Cam Chancellor or Richard Sherman, uh, the numbers obviously don't reflect that. And that secondary and that entire unit really isn't as scary as those numbers suggest. So uh, Wentz, obviously the hands-down favorite to win the MVP at this point. 9-0 to zero touchdown to interception ratio. Over the past three games, even more impressively, 22 to 3 ratio since week five. So, um, due for some touchdown regression, getting two, three touchdowns, even in games that he's posting under 200 yards. But still, um, <clears throat> obviously, again, favorite for the MVP and, and deservedly so. Seattle, though, uh, even without these guys, they're no slouch. They should keep Wentz's ownership. That name should keep Wentz's ownership between uh, six to eight percent, just having that Seattle next to his name as the opponent. Uh, Matt Ryan, though, and Deshaun Watson are the best quarterbacks that the Seahawks have faced uh, since probably the end of October, about the last month and a half, a month or so. Uh, and each of them had huge games against the Seahawks. So the other guys that they faced over that time, Jimmy Garoppolo, Drew Stanton, and Eli Manning. Uh, you tell me what class Carson Wentz is in out of those guys. So uh, rolling with Wentz, 8,000 pretty confidently on Sunday. Secondly, at running back, I'm rolling out Christian McCaffrey, 7,300 at New Orleans. Love McCaffrey this week. He has at least five targets in every game this season, and he's averaging eight looks per contest since week six. So um, even in games, and it's happened frequently, that he's had zero success as a rusher, he's just been so productive as a pass catcher that it doesn't matter what he does uh, when Cam Newton hands him the ball. So uh, on Sunday, though, this matchup with the Saints, a team that's given up a lot, of productive performances to pass catching backs all year. James White, eight of eight targets in week two. Theo Riddick called in five balls in week six. I think I identified Chris Thompson as a, as a guy I liked against this team a few weeks ago. Obviously got hurt in that game, but should have had uh, at least a, a reasonably productive game. So hopefully the same thing doesn't happen to McCaffrey. But against this team earlier in the year, week three, he had one of his best games of his entire rookie campaign. Hauled in nine of 11 targets for 101 yards receiving. And he had 16 FanDuel points. So uh, this is a game with a 48 and a half over under. I think the week's second highest. Uh, McCaffrey will probably be around 10% owned. But this kind of revival of the Saints defense, and it deservedly so, they're one of the most improved uh, defenses in the league. They're going to keep that number for McCaffrey probably around 8 or 9%, hopefully. Even at 10%, I like him. He'll be in all my lineups, 7,300 at New Orleans. Big reason for that, rolling out a Panthers stack. Against New Orleans, Devin Funches is my top wide receiver play, 7,500. Uh, again, 78 over under, and Vegas has a three and a half point spread uh, in this matchup. So I'm okay with this stack, rolling out Cam Newton in some lineups too. Uh, but Funches has been the biggest beneficiary of Kelvin Benjamin's departure from Carolina. Had 12 targets last Sunday against the Jets, and he's been targeted more than six times in every game since week one. Uh, so Newton and Funches have the chemistry that Cam and Benjamin never had. Um, and Fun Funches just has incredible speed, runs like a gazelle, uh, gives him the ability to turn any bubble screen, any short down pass uh, into a score. So again, state secondary, the most improved unit, probably of any position, any kind in the NFL all year. Uh, but without Marshawn Lattimore and Ken Crowley, it's just not the same. Possible these guys are going to be back on Sunday. I'm not betting on it. Anything less than 100%, these starting quarterbacks love Funches' chances, uh, especially probably with ownership levels. Around 8%, and he's got that questionable tag at this point in the week. Didn't practice on Wednesday, so always think that helps to press ownership, and I really like Funches because of that in Week 13. All right, finally, uh, my top tight end target is Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham's uh, 6,700 on FanDuel. Probably over 10% on, but this is a good play regardless. Hear me out. Um, clear top, top four at this position. It's not close. Even with Evan Ingram, it's not close. Gronk, Ertz, Kelsey, and Graham are on another level. Um... That alone should make him appealing, the fact that he's under 7000 priced on FanDuel. But, um, you know, Philly, Jimmy Graham, and Seattle's opponent, obviously, is one of the 
top defensive units in the league, obviously one of the top teams in the league, but uh, they've really only faced a few legitimate tight ends all season. So most importantly, the good tight ends that, that Philly has faced, Jordan Reed, Travis Kelsey, exploded around 20 fantasy points for each of them. So uh, Jimmy Graham, he's a guy that scored four times in Seattle's past three games. Overall, he scored in six of Seattle's last seven. So uh, had a really ugly start to the season. Basically, Seattle's entire offensive unit did. Russell Wilson, um, probably the leading cause of that. But that seems like a long time ago. It seems like months ago, and it was months ago. So Jimmy Graham, you can roll him out confidently. I don't care what his ownership is. 6,700, he's a great play this week against Philly, and his ownership won't be high. So check that out. Thanks for checking this uh, video out. Follow us on Twitter, at Fantasy Advice. We'll get all your questions answered before uh, lineup lock on Thursday night, Sunday, and Monday.